Hello, my name is Charles Shapiro. I am the soil scientist up at the Haskell Ag Lab near Concord, Nebraska. We're going to be going over what's in Section D, titled What Happens When Nitrogen is Applied to the Soil. We're going to go over these terms, uh, and it's very important that we understand what the terms mean. The exact name of the term uh, isn't as important, but if you feel like you know what these terms mean, then you've covered what's in this lesson. Uh, but these are the terms and the processes that happen when you apply nitrogen to the soil or organic amendments. And since nitrogen is the nutrient that we spend the most amount of money on, it's important that we understand uh, how to manage these processes uh, so that we keep as much of that nitrogen in the root zone as possible. In your book, you have a more detailed nitrogen cycle than what is shown here. But this is, these are the processes that are the most important for us to know. And so we're going to go over each one. Uh, but the important thing is to remember that they work all together uh, and they're going on every day in the soil once the temperature warms up. The, what we're going to focus on are the ones that are uh, involved in various losses. So uh, we have ways of losing the nitrogen uh, through leaching. It can go into the atmosphere. It can be tied up in the organic matter. And, and that's what uh, we want to avoid. We want to keep it in the root zone in the nitrate form so the plants can take it. So you could see if an animal drops manure on a field, that's the organic nitrogen. And then that organic nitrogen will go through a process. If we put uh, a fertilizer on the field, like a nitrate form, then it starts the nitrogen cycle there where the, the nitrates are. So the first uh, process we're going to talk about, and it really doesn't matter which process uh, we use or where we start on this cycle, uh, the, the important thing is to know uh, that these processes are going on and what are the conditions when they happen the most. So for mineralization, which is the transference of nitrate or nitrogen from organic material, whether it's manure or soil organic matter or com compost or just dead plant material, uh, the nitrogen has to be split off from the organic source. And when it's split off, it's in an NH form, whether it's ammonium or n ammonia depends on uh, certain conditions. And so that's the process of mineralization. Basically, mineralizing, going to a uh, uh, chemical from an organic source. The next step is nitrification. And that's when it goes from the ammonium source to nitrite. It doesn't stay in nitrite very long. Then it becomes nitrate. And although plants can take up uh, ammonium as well as nitrite, most of the end going into the plant is in nitrite nitrate, excuse me. So uh, that's what we really want to keep in track of is the nitrates because the ammonium is not going into the plants very well. Now once it gets into nitrate, that doesn't mean it's going to go right into the plants. Conditions can uh, arise where it can leach, uh, but in this case we're talking about immobilization, which is where it goes, it, that's the opposite of mineralization. The mineralization moved the organic material into the ammonia form, uh, and here we're taking the nitrate and putting it back into the organic form. And that happens uh, when there are microbes in the soil and there's a lot of carbon, and the microbes use nitrate as a food source. Uh, it, it helps them grow, and so that's, this will happen when you might have a lot of corn residue or a lot of wheat stubble and not a lot of nitrogen there. That nitrogen is put into the organic matter and that makes conditions where the nitrates are very low in the soil and your crop can turn yellow for a while. Eventually those, organ those microorganisms will die and they will release the end again. But for a while uh, it's immobilized. One condition called denitrification is probably uh, 
a condition that doesn't happen that much in Nebraska, especially during our drier periods. But we have times in the spring and there are places in the landscape where water will uh, collect. And whenever we have water sitting saturated soils for more than two or three days, uh, we create conditions that are called anaerobic conditions, which means there's no oxygen. And then microbes use the nitrate as an energy source and it, they break the nitrate down, ends up going into the atmosphere as N2. So even though this isn't a major uh, loss mechanism for us, when you go farther to the east of the United States, into Illinois, Indiana, Pennsylvania, where they have a lot wetter springs, this denitrification is a bigger problem. But there are situations in our landscape where this might occur in some years. If we step back and think about putting fertilizer on our soil uh, and not incorporating it, which sometimes is a good practice and many people are in no-till and they do have to uh, just put the nitrogen on the surface, there are conditions where we will lose uh, nitrogen to the atmosphere. What happens is the ammonia, uh, urea breaks down and when it breaks down it's called hydrolysis and that hydrolysis produces free ammonia gas. If the urea is in the soil, if it's incorporated in the soil, then that ammonia gas will uh, attach to clay particles, organic matter particles, it could go into the water solution. But if it's sitting on the surface of the soil, that ammonia gas will go into the atmosphere. So uh, that's something that we have to watch for. If we get rain, about a half inch of rain after we apply urea or UAN, uh, the, that's enough water to move the uh, material into the soil or you can irrigate it on. We do also have some uh, nitrogen additives called urease inhibitors that will protect from this hydrolysis for 10 days to two weeks. Kind of as an aside, there are ways that we can get uh, nitrogen going back into the soil. Everything I've talked about so far has been either losses to the atmosphere or putting the nitrogen in a condition where it might leach. But over time, and this is how the nitrogen, most of our nitrogen got into the prairie to begin with, uh, was through nitrogen fixation by lightning. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to convert the N2 gas into ammonium. Uh, because of the, uh, the chemistry of it. Uh, but when you get a big lightning, it has a, a high charge and it, it does uh, put a hydrogen bond, a bond into that nitrogen. So even if we might gain five, six, seven pounds a year per acre, uh, you know, that's not a lot of N, you can't grow a crop on it. But if you have 10,000 years of getting seven pounds a year, that slowly gives nitrogen to our soil and back when there was prairie, that grass would use it and the grass would die and then the next year the, it would break down and the new grass would come and that's how come we ended up with 18 inches of topsoil. Now in our uh, agriculture we have legumes that through microbial symbiosis, uh, bacteria in the roots do the same thing as the lightning for the most part and they can fix, uh, alfalfa can fix uh, 200 250 pounds of N a year. So that's another way we can get some nitrogen back from the atmosphere into the soil. Again, that's part of the nitrogen cycle. The, the next uh, loss mechanism is leaching. And we get leaching when you have nitrate. Ammonium doesn't leach. For the most part, it attaches to the soil, either the organic matter or the clays. But the nitrate will leach because it's water soluble, it's in the soil water, and if you have drainage, if you irrigate too much and the water moves, if you have a big rainstorm and the water moves, that uh, nitrate is soluble and it moves with uh, the soil water. Here is an example of two different situations, different irrigation situations. The surface irrigation uh, on the left and the or excuse me, the sprinkler irrigation on the left and the furrow irrigation on the right. And the, sir, the sprinkler irrigation where they can control the water better and they don't have 
high levels of water going on at any one time. The soil nitrates at the end of the season are concentrated in the above. Both these uh, figures have the same total pounds of nitrogen in the top 48 inches. But where there was furrow irrigation and there was a lot of water going through, it's not as well controlled, it's not as uniform. You know, where you, the furrow irrigation starts uh, near where the water comes out compared to where it goes to the end of the field, it's not the same amount of water going in. So where there's a lot of water going through near that initial pipe, you might be leaching some N. And once you get the N down below four feet, uh, the, most crops can't take it up. And so it's lost and could be, um, could get to the groundwater. So if we want to visualize how nitrogen might move in the soil, we have here the idea of uh, a band, whether it's an anhydrous band or a UAN band. Uh, now, if it's a UAN band, it's not going to be the same material as an anhydrous because UAN has ammonium nitrate as well as urea, and anhydrous is just ammonium. But you put that in there, and then here you see the darker part is the wet. And then as, it, as the water uh, goes through the profile, the nitrogen uh, goes down with it. And it, it stays, it spreads out a little bit, but it doesn't spread out that much. Uh, if you have a furrow irrigation where you're just irrigating uh, through the furrow and your band is below it, it's going to spread out more because the water is spreading out to dry areas. If we look at the previous slide where everything is wet, then you don't get that spreading out because there's water across the whole uh, surface there. But here, uh, because it's coming down and out, we get a little bit bigger spread. So uh, there's a lot more that we can say about nitrogen and how it moves through the soil, uh, but we're going to end here and just leave you with a few of these extension publications. Some of these are not currently in our extension publications site, but in the Digital Commons, uh, which you can just type in your browser, Digital Commons, you can find some of these publications. They have uh, this, this top one here by Frank and Watts uh, is a very good one about how uh, water moves in the soil by texture, sandy soils, it moves quicker than silt, loam, and clay. And so uh, if you want more information, you can go to these.